Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here. Welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to Zombicide Black Play. Uh, as usual, if I set up a game, I normally do at least two or three scenarios. It just makes it a lot easier rather than packing everything up, packing it away and then getting a new game out. So we're going to do the first proper scenario of Zombicide Pla Black Plague, Dance Macabre, which we did last time. That was like an introductory scenario, and this is like the first proper scenario, and it's called Big Game Hunting. And what are our objectives? Well, we've got to kill at least one Necromancer. Yes, Necromancers are in this, and we've got to kill at least one Abomination, because they're in it as well. So those spawn cards are shuffled in and there is a good probability they will come out in fact it's virtually guaranteed and so long as our heroes kill one necromancer and one abomination those are two of our objectives but there is a final objective and that is to find the blue token so when we flip these over one of these will be blue one of these red objectives will be blue on the other side and that will be the necromancer's lab and assuming that there isn't a necromancer and an abomination already on the board, we will spawn a necromancer and an abomination as soon as we find that lab. So as you can see, we're definitely going to have to fight a necromancer and we're definitely going to have to fight an abomination. Once we've achieved all three of those objectives, then the quest has finished and we have been successful. So I'm not going to do an introduction or setup episode. Um, as regards rules and stuff, they are pretty straightforward. So anybody who wants to have a look at Dance Macabre, which is the first sort of playthrough of Black Plague that I've done, if you go there, I will explain the rules in more detail. I'm just sort of going to breeze through. Any rules that I go through in this particular playthrough will be ones that we haven't come across before, and in which case I'm probably familiarising myself with them, so they will probably get mentioned. But other than that, I'll just go straight through. Uh, is there anything else? Yes, let's. Uh, we've got a couple of extra tiles. We had two tiles last time, but now we've got four arranged so. We have ten doors, so all these are red doors. So we don't have to pick up a particular token to be able to open one of the coloured doors. They're all red. Uh, we're using both the vaults, the purple one and the yellow one. They're set up here and they both have an artifact in them. There's only two artifacts in the base game. So one of these is the Orcish Crossbow and the other one is the Inferno spell. So they'll be in here awaiting our heroes to liberate them. The yellow vault has an entrance up here and an entrance down here. And the purple vault has an entrance here and here. In addition to that, we do have the objective tokens as mentioned and there are seven of those one two three four five six seven one of those is blue as soon as we flip it over and find the blue one that will be the lab wherever the necromancer is wherever he's making these horrible abominations okay so that is the basic setup and our basic objectives our first player is going to be nelly and the reason I picked Nelly is she does have that, she does start with that additional move action. So I think we'll uh, start with her first. Right, so let's stop wittering on and let's get going with turn one. <laughs> And here we are at the player phase. I've zoomed in a little just so we can see a bit better. Our first player is going to be Nelly, but something quickly just to mention we're back on our basic equipment. So they haven't kept any equipment from the that they found in the previous adventure. So they're back to the basic starting equipment. So we'll uh, make sure that it's a bit more of a challenge. So First up is Nelly, as mentioned. Her first move is going to be a free move because of her special ability. And then she's going to try and open this door. Our whole plan is, well, there's not many zombies on the board. Let's get into these vaults and let's get that special equipment. So she's going to try and open this door with a first proper action. 
So she's got a short sword, she needs to roll a four or better. She rolls a three, which isn't good enough. So the second action, she's going to go again. Another three. Let's try another dice. And with the last action, she's going to try again. And she gets a six. So that in total, that was three tries. So that is three noise tokens. So we'll put those there. But she did manage to open the door. But opening the door to this room, which looks like some sort of forge or blacksmithery, it may even be Samson's old blacksmith place. Um, in doing that, we obviously have to do our first spawn because we've opened a building. And we get a single fatty, which is pretty bad. We need two to kill it. We need a weapon that does two damage. So it looks like our friend Samson will be stepping up. Unfortunately, he is next. So Sam Samson's going to go next. So here he is. And he's going to use two of his actions to move. So one here, one here. And he's going to try and thump the zombie with his hammer. So he needs a four or better. And he gets a five, thank God, because he's the only one that could kill it. So he has killed the fatty. So good stuff. And that will move him up one experience point so he's at one experience and that is it for samson's go right who's after samson after samson it is silas and silas is also going to use his three actions to go one two and then he's going to search so he's not going to try, you know, or is he going to try and open the vault? He's going to try and open the vault. We need, no, he's not because he's only got a short bow. Forget that, he's going to search. <laughs> so let's... Oh, and he finds a torch straight off. So he's got a torch. We put that into his other hand. And that is it for his go. After him, it is Anne. And she's going to go one two and she is going to try and open the vault door if you remember if we open vaults we do not spawn zombies in vaults so she is going to use her short sword and it's like any other door we need a four or better she gets a six so we have opened the vault brilliant stuff So that's the end of her actions. Next to go is Baldrick. So what Baldrick's going to do is he's going to go one, two, and he's going to step down into the vault, which is the purple one. But he's got no actions left, remember. So he's just going to have to stay here. And he's going to have to wait to have a look at that artifact for next turn. Our next player is Clovis, and Clovis is going to go one, two, and he is going to search. So what's he going to get? And he finds some apples. Discard this card to gain an experience point, so that is what he's going to do. He's going to discard the apples, and he has gained a single experience point, putting him up to one. And that is it for our player phase. Next, it is the zombie phase. And here we are, we've zoomed out again, so we've got all the spawn points. Right, let's start from the top. So, I think there's no zombies on the board, so there's no activations. We go straight to spawning. So, our first card is a runner. So, we've got a runner up there. He's heard the noise and he's come legging it in to have a look. The next spawn point over here we get 
No one. Woohoo! That's okay. And the final spawn point just down here. We get another fatty. So that is some it's another one for our friend Samson to try and deal with. So there is the fatty. Uh, obviously he's gonna have to travel all the way around here because this door is not yet open. Right, so that is all the zombies spawned. And that is it for the zombie phase. So next up is the end phase. And here we are back at the end phase. So we'll get rid of all the noise tokens. There you go. And we will move the first player token. So our first player next round is going to be Samson. So I think he's got a bit of time though. He's not going to go straight for this zombie, I don't think. Um, he's going to like perhaps do a bit of searching or something and may lie in wait for him here want to give him as many actions as we can in order to take him down right so that's the end of the first turn of big game hunting let's get straight into turn two And here we are with turn two. Slight delay there, but back now. So our first player is Samson. And the first thing he's going to do is search. So let's have a look around. And he finds some salted meat. Discard to gain an experience point. So we'll do that straight away. That'll put him up to two experience. And with his final two actions, he'll move. So one, two and he will stay there righty ho next up is silas what's silas going to do well i think silas is also going to search yeah so let's see what oh and he's got his torch so he gets two cards so let's have a look he gets a mana blast and an axe an axe is very useful we can guarantee to open doors with that. That's cool. Right, oh, so put those in his backpack. Or will he trade? No, he'll put those in his backpack. He will trade, but that is first action. His second action, he'll move here and then he'll trade. He'll trade with Nelly. The reason we're going to trade with Nelly is she's the fastest because she gets the extra movement action. So she'll probably get to doors first. So let's give her the axe. So there we go. Going to give the axe to Nelly. And we shall put that. We shall pop that in her other hand. In her off hand. Brilliant stuff. We're going to... Trade anything else? No, we're not. We shall keep it at that. And I think that, that is the end of Silas's go. Yes, he searched, he moved, and then he traded. Yep, yeah, that's cool. He'll keep the mana blast um, for Baldrick. Righty oh, after Silas, we have Anne. And Anne is going to search. So let's have a look. Ooh, plate armor. Very nice. So we've got a nun with tin knickers top banana so we'll put that in her body slot cool that'll be excellent along with her bloodlust ability fantastic stuff right so she has got two actions left and what will she do she will move i think so let's go one two she'll start heading this way i think she'll be able to take the runner out no problem so that is Anne's movement, and next up it is Baldrick. Baldrick is our next player. He's down here in the vault. So the first thing he's going to do is he's going to have a look what he's got. And he's got the Orcish crossbow. That's a bit of a downer. I was hoping it was going to be the Inferno spell, but we know that is now in the other vault. So he'll take this, put it in his backpack because it's a two-handed weapon. And he will try and give this to Silas. So he puts that in his backpack. His next action is to move out of the vault into here. So that's his second action. And for his third action, he'll move here. So he should be ready to trade that next turn 
to Silas. That's cool. Right, oh, who's after Baldrick? It is Clovis. Here we are with Clovis. He, oh, I tell you what, he better do. I nearly forgot about this, didn't I? So we have got the um, objective token, and he'll flip that over. Um, we'll be in a bit of bother if it's the blue, if it's a blue one, because this will be the lab. Th thankfully, it's the red one. It's it's a red one, so we're all right. But he does get five experience points, and that puts him up to six. He's now at six experience points, but we're still in the blue, so that's okay. Right, he's going to... What's he going to do now? I think he will search, actually. So he is going to search as well. And he gets another axe. So we've got another axe. So we'll put that in his offhand. That's coolness. So we should be able to get through any doors that we want now. So he's picked up the objective token, he's searched, and now he's going to move with his last action out here. So that is the end of Clovis's move. Next up, we have Nelly. And she's going to be our last player in this player phase. Hmm. She's got an axe now, that means she can open a door. She's got free movement. Could move again. Open this door with an axe, but then we'll get a spawn. And she's only got one action left. So perhaps we don't want to do that. Um, I know what we'll do. We shall use a free action to go in here, a free movement action. Then she'll search. Whoop. Oh, and she finds a lightning bolt which could be very useful for Baldrick. So she'll put that in a backpack for the time being. And what she'll do is, so that was a first action, the search, because she had a free action, remember? So back out here with a second action. And with a third action, she will trade, and she shall trade this lightning bolt to Baldrick. And he will give her the orcish crossbow, I think. Who's going to be first player next turn? It's going to be Silas, so it doesn't really matter. Um, no, Baldrick will keep it. Silas is going to be first player, <coughs> excuse me. So he'll be able to trade for that immediately next turn. Cool, so that's the end of the player phase. So that means next up we have the zombie phase. And here we are at the zombie phase. And first up, we have activation. So that is our runner. So he's going to go one, two. That's not too bad. Even with another activation, he's only going to catch up to Anne and think she can look after herself. So we've got an activation for the fatty. He just moves one. So that's him done. And now it's the spawn phase. Right. So first up, we get... A double spawn, brilliant start. So nothing up here, and we get two spawn cards here. Right, so the first one is a walker, that's fine. We're still on blue, so we've got a walker. And the next one is, oh. Yeah, the abominations out already. The abominations out straight away. And we've got no dragon bile. All we've got is a torch and no dragon bile. Right, so let's get the abomination. Here we are, let's have a look at him. He's a bit mean, isn't he? He's been grown, growth, made him like horrendous and horrible. They've like messed around with his with his metabolism, he's grown all out of control. He's even split in half. His skin cannot contain him. He looks pretty horrible. And he comes out here. So this is the abomination that people have seen roaming the streets. And he's heading for our guys. So we're going to have to find that dragon bile quickly. Right, so that's the double spawn there. So, last spawn will be down here. 
and we get oh we're getting a full house is what we're getting we've got a necromancer now and this is like a double spawn because he brings his own spawn with him so let's get one of these tokens this is a necromancer spawn token um, we, the good thing is if you do kill a necromancer you can get rid of a spawn token so generally as a rule you'll you'll pick the necromancer spawn token to get rid of um, let's get the necromancer and here he is all in red and black with his chain round him as a belt his skull and his staff and he looked pretty mean doesn't he yep so there he is and he's turned up here so that's pretty bad news he's going to try and escape if he escapes that spawn token stays on the board that is bad while that is on the board we have got to keep spawning off it so let's kill the necromancer as quickly as possible right so because he's brought a, a spawn token with him it means we have yet another spawn card and we get lucky because all we've got to spawn is a walker that's pretty cool right grab a walker and there we go so in a way we've been quite lucky um the time not to get a necromancer coming out is when there's loads of zombies because it's difficult to kill him because you have to kill things like walkers first because of targeting priority and things like that if you try to hit them from range so while there's not many of these zombies on the board hopefully we will be able to dispatch him but we might have to mess around now with our tactics because I was planning to go up there but we're gonna have to get rid of him first and we're gonna have to find some dragon bile very very quickly right okay so that is the end of the zombie phase let's move on to the end phase and here we are at the end phase well there was no noise made um, other than the noise that the heroes make anyway there's no tokens there's no extra tokens to take off the board so all we've got to do is move the first player token and as mentioned before it's going to go to silas so silas is going to be first next turn hopefully he'll be able to trade for that crossbow and then he can look to like kill the fatty and stuff like that because if he can trade for the crossbow move shoot at the fatty kill it then that gives a chance to say Baldrick to move and start firing lightning bolts and mana blasts at these two guys. Um, that should be pretty cool. Get rid of that necromancer and that walker. There's nothing we can do about the abomination. We do not have any dragon bile. So anyway, we'll have to think about that and we'll have to do some serious searching, I think, because with that abomination out, we are in a spot of bother. Right, so that's the end of turn two. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, thanks for all the subscriptions, and once again, thank you for nudging me over the 500 subscriber mark. That's fabulous. Thank you very much. Thanks for all the comments and for all the tips and everything, and thanks very much for pointing out any mistakes again if i've made a mistake anywhere please do point it out and i will try and rectify it in the next episode okay oh and once again thanks very much to everybody who's gone over to board game links to upvote the site thank you right i hope you join me for the next episode of zombicide black plague and big game hunting but until then this is me, Cat Weasel, signing off. Toodaloo.